Welcome back, this is Yammy Jack, and today we got uh, Gunslinger Corridor Suicidal, and I have a big old book right here. Really big book. It's this big old, it's a big old book. Here are all the book pages and stuff, like, it's a big old book, dude. It's, uh, color printed and stuff, too. You got all these, like, cool pictures, and they have, like, well, it's, it's I say color, but it's, you know, black and blue are the two colors that you get in this. Um, please don't kill me, Seds. I still have this book in my hands. How am I supposed to survive this? It's okay. I don't have any doubt, okay? Um, so I got a, got a big old book. And what's the book called? It's called The Annapolis Book of Seamanship. And, uh... Wow, they just got stuck back there, eh? Alrighty. And uh, I'm gonna read it slowly over time, unless they all, I guess, teleported out because they were stuck <laughs> and decided that uh, they couldn't path to me anymore, so they're not actually down there, which could be the case. Is very likely the case, in fact. Is almost definitely the case. Um, so I'm gonna read through it. It's gonna take a long time. Like I said before, it's it's a big book, and it's uh, it's an important book. And it's not like uh, casual reading, you know? If I forget somebody's name in a, in a fictional tale, I'm not really beat up about it. I'm not really going to be torn up. But if I forget what the name of, uh, you know, the backstay and the forestay, or the, the, the what, the... Uh, see, I've forgotten it. The, uh, the backstays and the headstays and all of this kind of stuff. You know, if I forget all that, that's... Now we're getting to a point where there's, uh, you know, we have a problem, right? Let's go ahead and turn cheats on so that we can just do this nicely and easy. Um, yeah, so if I, if I forget this stuff, that's a problem. I have to, to go and continue studying it. So um, it's going to be a long read, but I got a long time to go before I'm actually going to be able to move on to a boat. Um, step one is just like lose weight and get a little bit more fit so that I'm not uh, going to be a detriment to whoever I'm sailing with. Um, step two is uh, like taking some, some lessons and I don't know if we'll actually end up on a boat the first time, but probably. It's very highly likely. Um, and then I'm on, I'm on a boat. And, uh, you know, the stuff I learn here isn't really going to be useful at that point. So, it's you know, there, there, there's a, a long time to go. Many, many months. Um before owning this book is actually going to show its um, importance to my life. Um, so that's cool. But, uh, yeah. I've also I've been thinking about uh, what strategy I'm going to end up taking to, uh, to get my boats and own it and all that. And... Owning a boat sooner rather than later. Like, I've been thinking about it a lot, right? Because I don't want to go make a decision without thinking it through thoroughly. And uh, owning a boat it sounds great. It sounds like a dream. Um, living on it also sounds like a dream. Um, but for right now, and for probably like a year, uh, even if I have the opportunity to, I don't think it's going to be a good idea. Unless I happen to, like come into a lot of money um, but because I'm planning on going through some some pretty major uh, surgeries in the near future so I've got uh, in March a month away from now I've got the uh, like assessment for the um, the archaeectomy so they're gonna chop off my nuts um, so that's one you know uh, part of the uh, the equation. I don't really want to go through like the recovery for that on a boat. Um, and then I'm also planning on getting um, something set up along the lines of so, so some something progress anyway towards um, SRS. I want to get like laser hair removal done and all this kind of stuff. Uh, there are there are just some things with regards to the transition that um, wouldn't I wouldn't want to have to go through the recovery or or the financial or whatever when I'm on a boat and I have to have that money for uh, emergency funds and stuff like that so 
going to have to postpone it for a little while. Save up. And I'm still going to be taking lessons and, and maybe, uh, like, seeing if I can't crew on some boats and stuff like that. But uh, my plan of maybe getting a boat like this year even, probably off the table at this point. Just because, uh, yeah, like, it's it's I'm going to be getting my Orky. I don't really want to get that and then have to go on a sit on a boat while I'm recovering and have to, like, do all of the work that I have to do on the boats while I'm recovering from an Orky X. Like, it ju that just sounds terrible and, like, not good and something that my doctor would say, hey, for the next bit, you should see if somebody else is able to take care of the boat. And I'd be like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't have the money for that. Um, so at least until I get that done, it's probably best for me to, to stay off of uh, full-time living on a boat. Um... Just so that I don't have to, to worry about the recovery. And then depending on how soon I'd be able to go for, like, uh, SRS, uh, it might be... Um, good for me to... Uh, go for, uh, like, just wait until that happens as well. But that's probably going to be, like, years away and... I'm willing to wait a little bit to postpone my dream to, to make sure that things go happily and healthily and stuff, but that's a little bit too long, so. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but but like this summer is almost definitely a, a no-go unless I happen to, to get in really, really quick for the Orky, but I don't think that's going to happen because, again, I'm overweight right now and they're probably going to want me to lose weight before they actually go through with any operations, so that's going to be like just the time and, you know, yada, 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 right? So. Um. Stuff to do, right? But I've got the book. I can start reading it now, and uh, that'll be nice at the very least. So I can start learning stuff and uh, have uh, at least a basic understanding of, uh, of kind of what I'm talking about and what's going on and all that, and and know what the stuff is at least. Even if I don't have the the personal practical experience with it, I'll, I'll at least know. Um. Wow, they went backwards. Feeling generous. I'll at least know, you know, what it is. I'll know what the stays are, and I'll know what the, you know, the, all the stuff is, right? All the, all the stuff and all the things that uh, that are on a sailboat. I'll know what it is, and I'll be able to kind of be a part of those discussions if it ever comes up in my life, which is, in my opinion, nice to have for sure. Um, but yeah. I'll read into the book. It's a big book. I don't know. It's, it's going to take me months to read through it completely. Because I'm going to be going slowly and stuff. And um, taking my time with it. And enjoying it. I'm not going to be rushing it. Because again, it's not like I'm going for for boat life anytime soon. Because there's just there's been delays that, uh, that kind of get in the way of doing that. So, um, unfortunately. Even if I wanted to rush through it and kind of like learn everything that I need to know. Like immediately. It's just it's not really... A practical thing so I'm gonna go through slowly and kind of um, have a decent understanding of everything that's going on before I actually get onto a boat uh, like everything that I'm gonna be learning is, is pretty much gonna be learned through practical means um, you know by being on a boat and actually being like doing the stuff and, and seeing what it's all done and all that like that's gonna be a big part of uh, of what uh, actually like teaches me how to do a lot of the things that I'm gonna need to do to, uh, to live on a boat you know um, because there are, there, are, there are a lot of things that you just can't really learn through a book, you know? Like, there are, there are things that you just, a book, YouTube, none of this stuff is really going to teach it to you until you get out there, right? Like, for instance, things you just can't learn through a book. How hard is it to actually, like, move the sails? How much effort does that actually take? The books can say, hey, it's pretty heavy, it's going to weigh this much, you know, that, that, this, this, you know, whatnot. But you're not actually going to, like, internalize that and uh, and fully understand how much effort it is and how tiring it is, how cold and how wet and inconvenient all these things are until you actually get out there and do it. You just you can't know that, you know? Typically, in my experience, I'm, I'm typically going to make, like, end up doing it for real and being like, wow, I thought it would be way harder. Um... But, you know, like, it, it's still not accurate, right? If you think it's harder than it is, that's still not accurate. And uh, accuracy is, is, uh, is crucial to, um, 
to making any kind of like large life decision like that. So um, I'll get out on the boat and, and get that experience that I need to to have that uh, confidence and knowledge. And then um, yeah, end up living on a boat for a while. I don't know how long I'm planning on it. I haven't really thought that far in the future. The thing with uh, full-time cruising is uh, y you don't have a future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you don't get that. That isn't a thing. Unless unless you happen to, to, to make a living sailing and, and you happen to put away money for, like, retirement and stuff, like, you're not really going to have money you know like like all the money that you have is typically gonna end up getting spent on um, your sailboat right like you're not if your goal if your dream is to, is to you know live on a sailboat and cruise around the world then um, you're not gonna make enough money to do that and also put together a retirement fund because if you do put away the retirement fund you're just gonna be like hey we got a bunch of extra money let's just sail longer you know like it's not really retirement fund isn't really in the cards for for this kind of lifestyle you don't have uh, you know workplace that's that's putting a cur that's putting money away you don't have like any kind of um, you don't you don't have anything right so when it's when it comes time for you to be like too old to work and you're you know, living off of who knows what, like you're gonna you're gonna have troubles, right? Um, so the future isn't really something that you think about, and it's kind of something you're sacrificing um, to be able to to live that kind of lifestyle to a certain extent. Anyway, I mean, like I don't live in a place where I'd have that much trouble um, being old and and like surviving at least. You know, like it's it's fine. You know, sell the boat, um, get a get a job at like McDonald's or something like that, and and work out my retirement days in in, uh, in a small apartment somewhere. Like that's well affordable, and I'm also gonna try and have investments and stuff like that, and maybe buy some real estate and all that along the way, so that I can continue to fund this without having to put in a lot of effort. And then at the end of the time, at the end of the day, I'd have like a place to live and places to sell to fund my retirement and stuff. Um, so it's not like you can't, you know plan for the future when you're when you're living the lifestyle but um there's there's no guarantees in it you know it's not like i have something right now that i'd be able to do that i can live i can live on the boat i can afford that i i don't have anything that i can say yeah for sure you know 40 years from now i'm gonna be able to retire you know like there, there's nothing of that nature um i'm gonna try and make it work but there's there's no guarantees right there's no savings or anything like that. It's it's. I'm gonna be living on the sailboat, and then as I'm on the sailboat, try and figure out a way to to continue to make it work and continue to to make it. Uh, you know, not to completely ruin my uh, my future, but you know, it's just it's just how it goes. So I don't know. I don't know how long I'll end up living on a boat. Assuming I get on a boat, I'm thinking I'd probably start living cruising around about when I'm 30, so five years from now. Um, I think that I'd be able to continue cruising, like, physically, until I'm, like, 50, even, like, 60, uh, if I stay in shape. Um, so, you know, like, the time limit is really, like, 30 years of sailing. Am I gonna wanna keep sailing around the world for 30 years? I, I don't know. Um, is the thing, right? Like, I, it's not even a really, a re really a decision I can make right now. Um, you know, I'm gonna have to go and sail, and as I do, I'll be like, yeah, no, this is what I'm gonna do until the day I literally just physically can't do it anymore. Or I'll be like, yeah, this will be fun for like 10 years, and then I'll, I'll settle down. I, I don't know. Um, it's a decision I just, I can't make right now, but. One I'll have to make eventually. It'll be fun, though. It'll be really fun. Honestly, the my 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 uh, the part I most look forward to is just having friends on board. 
as I'm sailing around the west coast of, uh, of Canada. Because that's, that's going to be the part that I enjoy the most, I think. Um, like, I'll probably circumnavigate the globe, like, once or twice, okay? Like, it's probably going to happen. Right? Like, I, I just, I don't think that it's going to be what I enjoy the most, you know? It'll be really, really nice to do. And I might change my opinion once I do it. But it, it, it's more of like a, I did this. I experienced this, I went there, I, I've been there, you know, like that kind of a thing. More so than a like, yeah, this is the life I want to live, you know what I mean? Just constantly just cruising around the world, just, you know, going from one continent to the next, you know, just something I'll do, almost definitely, you know, if I, if I get into this uh, lifestyle, if I do decide to do it, which I, I think I will, I'm almost certainly going to. Um cruise around the world at least once or twice um but i uh i don't know that that i'll i'll uh i'll do it constantly you know like if i end up living on a sailboat for 30 years i don't think that's going to be 30 years of sailing around the globe i think it's going to be like you know 10 years of sailing around the globe and like visiting all of these, you know, exotic continents and like all these cool places and stuff and um, then like 20 years of just kind of sticking around uh, the Pacific Northwest. Um, just because this is home, you know? It's a beautiful place as well, um, but it's home. And uh, home is cold, <laughs> so, so the other part there is I might just end up, because that's, that's the thing with sailing, right? People always ask, you know, like, um, <clears throat> to people who are, like, sailing full-time, what do you do in the winter? You want to know a secret? People who sail full-time don't usually experience the winter. You know, people who are circumnavigating the globe just go where the summer is. You know, like, Oh no, it's 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 coming up to, to winter up here in the Pacific Northwest. Guess we'll go to New Zealand. You know, like just go somewhere else and then all of a sudden it's 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 summer again and you're just in, in this beautiful weather and you can just continue sailing. Um So I don't know, I, I might decide that I don't like the cold and that I want to continue just you know you don't you don't have to go that far to uh to go from hot to cold. Like, you don't have to go that far. Um, so it's, uh, it's not like you have to go, like, you know, cross an ocean or something like that to, to go to, uh, to a colder environment, or a hotter environment, rather, um, to get away from the cold. But, uh, you just have to basically just, like, cross the equators. <laughs> More or less, just what you gotta do. Um... But, uh, yeah, no, you just don't have to deal with the cold, so, I don't know. I might, I might end up deciding that I don't want to deal with the cold and just continue. Um, probably, probably end up, like, finding a space. Because one of the things that, uh, that, that scares me most about uh, living on a sailboat is, uh, like, food. You know? Like, if, if you're out in some third world country and... Like, there's no just supermarket to go to because they don't have that kind of civilization available to them because they're living off in, like, you know, some random village in the middle of nowhere. Uh, your food's going to have bugs. Right? Like, you go to the superstore and you buy uh, a basket of tomatoes. Those baskets, that, that, those tomatoes have been washed thoroughly. There's probably no bugs in them. You go to some village in the middle of nowhere and buy a... Uh, a basket of strawberries from their, uh, you know, farmer's market. Those strawberries have not been washed. They'll have bugs on them, and you're going to have to wash them and, and uh, you know, get all the bugs off, or else you're going to have a bug infestation on board. And that is something that concerns me. Um, even, like, food at supermarkets in, like, you know, major cities is going to have uh, um, bugs on occasion, too, but not as commonly, right? So, um, that's that's one thing that kind of concerns me about uh, sailing around the world. So I think I'd end up living 
off of a lot of canned stuff um, that I bought in uh, <laughs> in places that I trust a little bit more, um, probably. So whenever I do end up, you know, if, if I decide that I don't want to live in uh, the Pacific Northwest because it's just too cold, um, then all I have to do is just decide that you know, I'm not going to do that and then find a place where I have uh, sort of like two homes, so to speak, in uh, in, in that are kind of like in opposing seasons um, and then kind of live there and uh, just kind of find a spot like that that has uh, good weather for me and then good groceries. So I might, you know, end up living in like Australia and... I don't know, like Japan or something. I don't know, like Japan, I think. Doesn't Japan have, like, hot and cold? Don't they have hot and cold winters? I don't remember. thought they did, though. Um, anyway, you know, just just find, like, two spots where I can go and, and live on that, uh, that kind of have the, the right weather for me and then also clean groceries. Um would be uh, would be kind of like what I ended up doing but I, I think I just accept the cold and uh, and live maybe like at a marina or something over the, the cold months um, so I have heating but you know like whatever probably just deal with it because I love this area I love living in I love living up here in uh, West Coast BC it's a beautiful area um, and uh, it's home you know I'd, I'd like to, to remain close to home so. Short of cash. Um, that's probably where I'll end up being. And then just having friends on board while I'm cruising around would be cool. You know, just happy and have, having like a friend over and like taking him around uh, the island and visiting all the spots and seeing everything and like that's that's what really sounds like fun to me personally. So anyway, that's gonna do it for today. So thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you like it, subscribe to see more in the future, comment if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.